Hello friends, today I will show you how to propagate lemon trees from cuttings using hydroponic techniques. In this video, step by step, I will guide you through the interesting process of propagating lemon tree from cuttings. First, we need to collect a healthy, vigorous lemon branches from a good variety, and it should be about 1-2 years old. Using a sharp knife, cut the branch into pieces about 10 to 12 inches long. Hydroponic propagation is a method of growing new plants, typically from cuttings or seeds, without the use of soil. Instead, the plant's roots are suspended in or continuously supplied with a nutrient-rich water solution. Hydroponic propagation is works water, oxygen, and all necessary mineral nutrients directly to the root zone, allowing the plant to use its energy for growth rather than searching for resources in the soil. The water used in hydroponic propagation must be rich in essential macro and micronutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, etc. Use your serrated knife to make a round shape at the bottom of the branch and remove the bark. Exposure the cambium layer. The cambium is a layer of actively dividing, undifferentiated cells located just beneath the bark. Wounding the cutting by removing a sliver of bark exposes this layer. This physical damage triggers the plant's natural healing process. The optimal time to take lemon tree from cuttings is during late spring and throughout summer, crucial for rooting. The primary reason to propagate during late spring and summer is to take advantage of the plant's active growth period and the warm soil temperatures which are necessary for new root formation and healing. Propagation is generally discouraged during the winter because the tree is typically in a state of dormancy. During dormancy, growth hormones and carbohydrates are stored as starch, and growth activity is minimal, leading to poor rooting success. Now take a bowl and a cork sheet. Place the bowl upside down on the cork sheet and use a marker pen to draw a circle the same size as the bowl. If you don't have cork sheets, you can use separate bottles for each branch. Now use a sharp knife to cut around the circle. If you don't use a sharp knife, your cut may be crooked. Cut the cork sheet in such a way that it sticks tightly to the upside of the bowl. The most important benefit is that plants grown from cuttings are genetically identical clones of the parent tree. This ensures the new plant will produce fruit with the exact same desirable characteristics. Now firmly place the cork sheet on top of the bowl. Place the cork sheet in such a way that it cannot move or come loose. The reason for using cork sheets in the bowl is so that the stems can be planted in a row above the water and stand upright after planting. This reduces water loss through transpiration and directs the plant's energy toward root production. Now take a soldering iron and heat it well. Now pierce the marked areas with a soldering iron. Make holes in such a way that the branches can be easily transplanted into the holes. If you make the holes too small or too big, you won't be able to place your branches properly. Make one hole slightly larger so that you can use that hole to rewater later when the water dries out. The water used in hydroponic propagation must be rich in essential macro and micronutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, etc. Take the rice in a bowl, fill the pot completely with water, and wash the rice well with water. Rice water is sometimes used in gardening as a natural alternative to commercial rooting hormones when propagating plants like lemon trees from cuttings. Pour the rice water into bowl and then fill the bowl completely with plain water. Now place the branches on the cork sheet in such a way that the branches can connect to the water. Rice water, while not a complete fertilizer, these components are thought to provide a minor nutrient boost that can support the initial growth and health of the cutting as it tries to form roots.
It's an economical and environmentally friendly option, repurposing a common kitchen byproduct instead of relying solely on synthetic chemicals. Some anecdotal evidence and studies suggest that rice water may aid in rooting and propagation. This could be due to the presence of growth-promoting compounds or the starch which can feed beneficial soil microbes. These microbes, in turn, can produce hormones that further encourage root growth. After that, keep them in a shaded place. Is that unrooted cuttings have no established root system to absorb water from the soil. They have to rely on limited water reserves within their stems after 45 days. If you see branches growing from your planted trunk, you will know that your cutting has been successful. Now I am open it and show you all how many roots it has grown. Look friends, how beautiful the roots have grown. If sufficient roots develop on the planted stem, it is ready to be planted separately. When removing the trunk, extreme care must be taken to avoid damaging the new roots, as the new roots are very tender. Perform the separation and potting in the early morning or on a cool, cloudy day to minimize stress from heat and sun. The new plant is essentially a cutting with a small root system and will need special care to harden off and adjust to its new life. If your cuttings were rooted in a high humidity environment like under a plastic dome or in a propagator, they need to be gradually introduced to normal conditions. This process is called hardening off. Start by opening the plastic cover or dome for a few hours each day to reduce the humidity. Increase duration. Over a week or two, increase the duration of exposure until the young plant is comfortable with the ambient air. This prevents shock to the leaves. After rooting and before full transplant, keep the young plant in a warm spot with bright, indirect light. Avoid intense, direct midday sun right away, as it can scorch the new leaves. Once the cutting has a good root system and shows strong, healthy new growth, it's time to move it to a larger container or its permanent spot in the ground. Spring or early summer is generally the best time for transplanting to allow the roots to establish before winter. Now, I will separate the branches and plant them in the tubs one by one. You can plant them directly in the ground or in a pot. However, instead of planting directly in the ground, it is better to plant in a pot and transplant it into the ground once it is mature. Water once a week. For the next few weeks, keep the soil consistently moist, but avoid being soggy. New roots are highly sensitive to drying out, but also prone to rot if overwatered.